It was a beautiful frosty afternoon. The air was crisp and cold. The leaves and berries sparkled in the winter sunshine. Brambley Hedge was alive with excitement as the mice prepared for that evening's traditional midwinter celebration. Merry midwinter, Dusty. Have you seen Primrose? Sorry, can't stop. Must get to the palace. What a rush everyone's in. Isn't it exciting? Yes, my dear, but we have to get that message to Primrose, I know, dear. The festivities would begin after dark when everyone gathered round the fireplace in the great hall of the old oak palace. Wow. As far as Primrose Woodmouse and Wilfred Toteflax were concerned, hauling the giant midwinter log to the fireplace and then watching it burst into flames was one of the best parts of the celebration. Make sure you tie those ropes tightly now. That's right. Those ropes have to hold all the way from here to the old oak palace. Could you grab that rope, Wilfred? Mm -hmm. Now pull. Ow! Hey, Wilfred, that's my tail. <laughs> Sorry, Teasel. <laughs> <laughs> now, one, two, three, and pull! <laughs> Primrose? Oh, Primrose? Oh, hello, Grandma! Grandpa, have you come to help us pull the midwinter log? Oh, no. I'm far too old and lame for that now. But believe me, when he was a young mouse, your grandpa was one of the strongest log haulers this side of the meadow. Oh, was I really? <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, Primrose, your papa... Wants to see you, dear. Now? That's what he said. But why? That's what he didn't say. Do you want to come with me, Wilfred? Now? And miss hauling the log? Go on, Wilfred. We won't be ready for that for ages. Hurry now. Your father said it was very important. Last one to the old oak palace is a stoat! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Basil. Hello, Wilfred. Where are you two going in such a hurry? Basil? Would you come and help us with the holly? It takes so much of it to decorate the great hall. And here's some for you, Wilfred. But, Mama, we don't have time. Of course you have time. Come on, Wilfred. Get a grip and pull. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ah. Here we are, Papa. Primrose. And Wilfred, too. Splendid. Splendid. Something awful has happened. What? But you two could save the day. How? Poor Conker here <coughs> has lost his voice. <coughs> Can't say a thing. That's terrible. How are you going to recite the Midwinter poem? I can't. Oh, oh no. no. So, Primrose and Wilfred, will you come to our rescue and recite the Midwinter poem at the ceremony this evening? Us? But I already have a job. I'm going to sit on top of the log. Wilfred, I can't believe what I'm hearing. You can sit on the log any year, every year. But, young mouse, it's a great honour to be asked to read the midwinter poem. Is it? It, it is. is. Especially this year, as Basil and Mrs. Eyebright and I will be telling the story of Cumulus Nimbus, the Ooh. mouse who wrote the poem. It's a wonderful story. And we tell it so well. I love the part where Princess Rosa... She was one of my uh, ancestors. <laughs> very distant, of course. But she may have lived in this very oak. The part where Princess Rosa and Cumion Snimbus... Oh, I like him. He was the first mouse to leave Brambley Hedge to go exploring. And he sent back letters to Princess Rosa, his bride-to-be. Or so the story goes. Oh. Oh. <gasps> I wish it were true. True or not. My favourite part of the story is the Midwinter Poem. Which means someone has to recite it, Wilfred. And that someone is us. Uh, I like coming to the rescue, but we don't know it properly. Well, let's go and practice then. Come on, we haven't got much time. Right, no one will bother us here. When the days are the shortest, the nights are the coldest. When the days are the shortest, the nights are the coldest. Ah. <laughs> ah. Now. Too heavy. Now too light. 
it. Ah. Ah. This'll do nicely. Right. Now let's try it again. When, when the days are the short. Oh. How are you getting on? Don't mind me. Oh, this is hopeless. We could go back to the log. I wonder if they've finished tying it up yet. Oh, really, Wilfred? We can't give up so easily. All we have to do is find a place to practice. Let's go and ask Mama. Here's another batch ready for the oven, Mrs. Crusterbread. Right you are, Lady Daisy. Oh, I don't know how we manage to eat so much, but we always do. <laughs> As Primrose and Wilfred enter the palace kitchen, their noses twitched with delight as the wonderful smell of hot blackberry and honey wafted towards them. Primrose's mother, Lady Woodmouse, was baking midwinter biscuits. Hello, Hello Mrs. Mrs. Crusty Bread! <laughs> Primrose, Wilfred, isn't it wonderful that you'll be reciting the midwinter poem? What an honour! That's what everyone keeps saying. But, Mama, we can't find anywhere quiet to practice. <laughs> Well, midwinter is not a quiet kind of day. Bite your backs, here I come. Why don't you try the attic storerooms? There's no reason for anybody to be going up there. That's a brilliant idea. Thanks, Mama. Why don't you take some biscuits and blackberry juice up with you in case you get hungry? That's an even more brilliant idea. Thank you, Mrs. Crusty Bread. Wow! Look at all this! Mama's right. It's the perfect place to practice. Let's see. When the days are the shortest, the nights are the coldest. Was this yours? Hmm? Oh, yes. But I grew out of it ages ago. Hmm. Now you say, the frost is the sharpest, the year is the oldest. Wilfred? Wilfred! Hang on! I want to see what's in here! Wilfred! We don't have time! Oh! Just a bunch of letters. Ooh. Oh, they look really old. Want a biscuit? Before I eat them all. Uh, no, thanks. I wonder what else is in here. What's this? A key! Hey, Primrose! Isn't there something in the poem about dressing up? And dress in your richest and finest and best. I'll do that part. <laughs> and dress in your richest and finest and best. Hey, Primrose, where does this go? I don't know. Let's open it. Oh, oh I can't. It's locked. Oh, I can see some stairs. Wilfred? If there's a keyhole, there must be a key. And I think I just might have it here. Oh! It fits! Their hearts were pounding with excitement and fear as they peered into the darkness. Where would the long winding staircase lead them to? Sh shall we see what's at the top? The light slowly faded as the midwinter afternoon gently gave way to the evening. An evening filled with excitement and promise. Mr. Toadflax, Dusty, Conker and Flax had started hauling the log to the Great Hall, encouraged by Mr. and Mrs. Apple, Basil and old Mrs. Eyebright. Keep going! You're almost there! Mm, it's a very good log this year. It'll make a lovely hot blaze. Uh, I can't say I blame young Wilfred for not wanting to miss this. It's still my favourite part of the celebration. My favourite part is that first cup of your famous midwinter punch. <laughs> Just as we light the fire. Oh, Mrs. Eyebright, you are too, too kind. Meanwhile, up in the attics, Primrose and Wilfred climb the secret stairs not having the faintest idea where they would end up. Suddenly the stairs came to an abrupt end, leaving them facing a mysterious door. I wonder what's through there? Well, there's only one way to find out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 wow! 
As the door opened, the young mice stared about them in amazement. They were standing in a most magnificent room. It seemed very, very old. Everything was covered in dust and the air smelled musty and strange. Where are we? I don't know. I've never been here before. Maybe your ancestors lived here in the olden days. Wilfred, look at these! They're just right for tonight! Oh, and dress in your richest and finest and best! I wonder where that goes. Well, there's only one way to find out. As Primrose and Wilfred set off to explore the secret rooms, Far below them, right, the log procession approached the old oak palace. It's time for the song. Basil, give us a note to start on. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What, what is, is it, Basil? Oh, I brought my lantern but left my fiddle back at the lodge. I won't be long. Oh, don't hurry, Basil. We like sitting up here. Yes. <laughs> we can sit up here all night. Yes. <laughs> Watch this! <laughs> merry, merry midwinter! Oh, 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 and a merry midwinter to you too, Teaser. Oh, well caught, Pet. <laughs> Up in the attics, far away from the festivities below, Primrose and Wilfred had found a whole suite of secret rooms. There was a dining room, a butler's pantry, a small kitchen, and several bedrooms, including a beautiful nursery. This is amazing! Whoever lived here had a lot of toys, <coughs> and a lot of clothes. Wilfred, you could wear that tonight. It's perfect for our poem. Ooh. What else is in there? Oh, look! Oh, isn't this one pretty? Who wore these things? Oh, what about this? <laughs> look, it fits! Oh, I bet that one itches. Oh, yes. Let me try this on. The nights are the coldest. The frost is the sharpest. The year is the oldest. It is awfully dark, isn't it? Do you know, Primrose, I can hardly see you. Oh, listen! <gasps> oh no! The midwinter log is here already! Roast the chestnuts, eat the wine, pass the cups along the line. Gather round the log, burns bright, it's warm as toast inside tonight. Have you seen Primrose and Wilfred? They missed the procession. It'd be a shame for them to miss the lighting of the log. I haven't seen them since they went off to the attic storeroom to practice. <laughs> Don't worry. They'll soon be down when they hear all the noise. Here's the bramble wine for the log, Basil. Thank you, Mrs. Apple. Merry Midwinter! like the log now. If we don't get back down there, we'll miss it. Come on! Um, here, put this on. Oh, oh. This way! Huh? Oh. Over here! Uh, uh, wasn't it over here? Well, I think it was this door. Oh. Primrose, this way! <laughs> Primrose, 
How do we get out of here? While Primrose and Wilfred were desperately trying to find their way out of their bewildering attic prison, down in the Great Hall, the midwinter celebration was about to begin. As the mice watched Mrs. Eyebright lean over to thrust the taper into the fire, their thoughts turned to the coming spring, to trees bursting into blossom, to the first warm rays of sun, and to the welcome song of birds returning home. To spring! To spring! The bright flames licked the mossy bark of the log, Oh, let the feast begin! Tuck in! Tuck in now, they're all homemade! <laughs> Come on, my dears! Come on now! I'm beginning to worry about Primrose, dear. She and Wilfred couldn't still be in the attics, could they? Would you like me to go and fetch them? Mm. Yes, please. Consider it done, my dear. Oh, it's no use. We'll never get out of here. And no one will ever find us, because no one knows about the secret staircase. Oh. Primrose! Primrose! Wilfred! Well, they obviously finished practising. They must be somewhere downstairs, waiting for their big moment. Well, I don't understand it. We got in here, so why can't we get out? I don't know. What are we going to do? The first one to entertain us tonight will be Dusty Duckwood. I will now do my famous three acorns and a hollyberry trick. Oh, so that's what he's been up to. <laughs> in the attic, so they must be waiting to make an entrance. Thank you, Dusty. Well juggled. And now, it's time for me to show you my famous shadow pictures. Ooh. Guess what this is. <laughs> ah. Oh, my goodness. Primrose, Primrose, look! Mm. I see there's been a change to the order of entertainment. I, um... Uh, <laughs> I, um, I am now proud to present Primrose and Wilfred. Who? Oh, um... <sighs> when the days are the shortest, the nights are the coldest. The frost is the sharpest, the year is the oldest. Then polish your whiskers and tidy your nest. And dress in your finest and richest and best. For winter has brought you the worst it can bring. And now it will give you the, the promise, promise of, of spring. spring. Oh. 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 <laughs> Didn't they recite well? What lovely hats. You're next, dear. Oh. It's very difficult to follow such an excellent recitation, but follow it we must. <coughs> we have our beloved midwinter poem, thanks to an extraordinary mouse. 
named Cumulus Nimbus. The famous explorer. As we all know, Cumulus was supposed to return from his long journey away from Brambley Hedge on Midwinter's Day to make Princess Rosa his bride. But as the day progressed, it seemed less and less likely that Cumulus would arrive. After the Midwinter Supper, when the mice entertained each other, as we have been doing tonight, Rosa decided to read a poem that Cumulus had sent her. Just as she got to the final line, and now it will give you the promise of spring, there was a flurry of snow in the hall, and a cloaked figure appeared. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> it was Cumulus. And so Cumulus married the princess. Ah. Oh. And they lived they happily, happily ever, ever after. after. Hooray! <laughs> it's, it's hooray! I love that story. Oh, and I really like thinking that it's true. I know, Poppy. But unfortunately, there's never been any proof. Just a moment. Look at these! What? what the, these are the letters from Cumulus. What? Uh, and what do I see here? The poem! The midwinter poem! <gasps> Primrose, where did you find these? Oh, just up in the attic. That's where we found these costumes, too. Oh, look! You're wearing the same clothes as in their portrait. How extraordinary! Where did you say you found them? Oh, um. Grandpa, when are you going to do your shadow pictures? I hope we didn't miss them. No, you did not. Uh, may I borrow that cloak, Wilfred? Of course. First of all, I'm going to do... A, a bat! <laughs> <laughs> As Mr Apple entertained the mice with his shadow pictures, Primrose and Wilfred gazed at the fire Ooh. and thought of all the lovely games they would play in Princess Rosa's palace at the top of the secret staircase. Soon their heads began to nod, and in no time at all, they were both fast asleep. chilly morning at the very end of autumn 
A cold grey mist hung in the silent air. Wilfred Toteflax hurried towards the weaver's cottage. He'd just woken up from an exciting dream about exploring. A dream which reminded him of an old book the weavers had on a shelf in their workroom. Blankets. I'm just finishing number five. So this one will make six. Oh, it's a shame we couldn't match the yellow. But we've used the last of Great Grandpa Blackthorn's special lichen. And no other dye comes close. I don't know how we'll ever find more. It grows somewhere in the mountains. But Great Grandpa Blackthorn was the only one who was ever able to find it. Oh, uh, come in. Oh, hello, everybody. Hello, Wilfred. Have you come to help? Huh? Help? We're making blankets for the voles up in the high hills. The moths have made holes in all their quilts. There's no time to make new ones before the cold weather comes. Oh, um, what would you like me to do? Well, nothing really. We've nearly finished. Oh, good. Um, may I uh, please read Daring Explorers of Old Hedge Days? <laughs> Again? Here it is. One of the most famous explorers of old hedge days was Sir Hogweed Whorehound. His greatest adventure started when he set off alone to look for gold in the high hills. Hello! Hello, Grandpa! There you are, Papa. Nearly ready. Flax is working on the last blanket. Good, good. Because we must leave soon if we're going to get to the high hills before dark. It's a very long way. The high hills? You're going to the high hills? Oh, Mr. Apple, may I go too, please? Oh, oh it's not for me to say, Wilfred. We'll have to ask your parents. Oh, may I go too, please? Well... Please, 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 please! All right, you may go as long as you're helpful and do as Mr. Apple says. I will, Mum. Thank you. I've got my rope, whistle, fire sticks, a ground sheet. What do you need a kettle for? As Sir Hogweed Whorehound says, a good explorer takes in his trusty pack all he needs to survive an adventure. <laughs> survive an adventure? You're only taking blankets to the voles. Yes, but we're going into the high hills. I'm off. Is Wilfred coming? Here I am! Wilfred, do you really need all that equipment? It looks terribly heavy. Why don't you leave some of it behind? But I must take everything. How can I be an explorer without my trusty pack? Oh, oh, oh all right. But don't ask anyone else to carry anything. Goodbye, Wilfred. Goodbye, Wilfred. Take care, Goodbye. son. As they passed the store stump, Wilfred wondered what kind of adventures he was going to have. Maybe we'll be cut off by a rock slide or chased by a hungry owl. Wilfred! Huh? This way. Sorry, Mr. Apple! And as they got to the old oak palace, Wilfred decided that one day he would write a book about his explorations. The High Hills. My mountain adventure. Ah! <sighs> At last, they reached the stepping stones where they crossed the stream. Oh, 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 oh. Steady, Wilfred. Thanks, Mr. Apple. Lunch? Yes, please. Oh, oh, oh. You know, Wilfred, you could leave some of your gear here and we could pick it up on the way back. No, thank you, Mr. Apple. If I'm going to be an explorer, and I am, I must be prepared for anything. <coughs> All right, have it your way. Are we prepared to start climbing? Oh, yeah. The sooner we leave the bottom, the sooner we get to the top. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Apple. When the mice set off again, the path quickly became steeper and steeper. <sighs> Don't call these the high hills for nothing.
By tea time, it was getting dark and cold, and the hills around were shrouded in mist. Wilfred didn't want to admit it, but he was beginning to feel a little bit tired. Look! A light! see you climbing all this way and with your bad leg too. We couldn't leave you without blankets now, could we? Come in, come in. Come on, come on in, come right in. Let's get you sat down in front of the fire and get you comfortable. Does anybody want any more? This is the best bilberry soup I've ever tasted. <sighs> oh. It's delicious. This way, young mouse, before you fall asleep in the bread basket. <laughs> Here you go. That's it. Are you going to wake me up at dawn so we can go exploring, Mr. Apple? Oh, no, 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 no. I think we all deserve a lie-in. And then after breakfast, we'll head back home. <laughs> Sweet dreams. Head back home? If I'm going to be a great explorer, I must do some exploring. <sighs> but how? When dawn crept over the rocky hillside, there was no sign of life in the Vole's cottage. It wasn't until the sun was well up above the horizon that Vole's and mice began <sighs> to stir. Uh, it's a hard life up here in the hills, isn't it? Oh, yes, but a good life. We wouldn't want it any other way. Though it would be nicer if it didn't get quite so cold and, and when the mist comes down, we're quite cut off. While Wilfred listened to the voles talk about their life, he tried to work up the courage to ask if they'd ever gone exploring, if they'd ever found gold. Um... <sighs> Another delicious meal. Just what we needed to send us on our way. That's right. Time to get back to work. But, um, Mrs. Eyebright will be wanting her new blanket. And we haven't even started it. <laughs> but, uh, it was kind of you to make all those blankets for us. Very thoughtful. They'll keep the cold out, that's for sure. But, uh, but aren't we going to go exploring? I'm sorry, Wilfred, but Lily and I must get back. But you don't have to get back, do you, Mr Apple? Well, I do, but not... Can't we do a little bit of exploring? Please? Not much, just a little. There are some fine junipers beyond the crag. <gasps> and you know how Mrs Apple loves junipers. Let's go and find some for her, please. Oh. <laughs> Why not? Yes! Goodbye, then. Goodbye. And thank you. Goodbye, now. Care. Goodbye, now. Bye! Go. Oh. Well, Fred? At last, I get to do some real exploring. Now, which way is the wind blowing? Hmm. The wind isn't blowing. So that means I'd better go... this way. I wonder how real explorers walk. Like this! Well, Fred? This way, Mr. Apple! My Mountain Adventure by Wilfred Toadflax. It was a sunny day with no wind when I started my explorations. Hmm. I wonder what's up there. <laughs> well, well, Fred? I... Oh, I... Wait for me! Wow! What's this? <gasps> oh! Gold! Well, Fred! Come down from there! Mr. Apple! I found gold! Don't be sad, There's no gold here! Come down at once! Oh! Oh! I can't. Are you sure? Positive. Right. Then don't move. Uh, I'll come up and get you. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, I really am much too old for...
for this. Oh. Slowly, one pour at a time. And don't look down. Be careful, Mr. Apple! It's all right, Wilfred. I'm almost there. Here we are. Now what? Now we find a place where it'll be easier to climb down. Follow me. Oh. 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 Be careful how you go, Wilfred. I, um, I bet this kind of thing happens to real explorers all the time. Oh. I'm sure it does, Wilfred. But don't think about that now. Just think about putting one paw in front of the other. Oh... Oh, no! This is just what we need. If only we had some rope. We ought to tie ourselves together. I've got some rope. Have you? Essential equipment for my trusty pack. Very good, Wilfred. Now, turn to the rock face and we'll ease our way along. One paw at a time. stayed behind. Wilfred wanted to do some exploring. I should think they'll be back just after dark. Oh, good. I'll watch for them. Primrose would be watching for a long time because her grandfather and Wilfred were nowhere near home. At least we can see now. Yes, but it's not going to do us any good. I have absolutely no idea where we are. You don't? No. Oh. <sighs> Wilfred, I'm afraid we're going to have to spend the night on the mountain. <laughs> oh, let's hope there's some place nearby to camp. Even though Wilfred knew it would be cold and dark on the mountain, and even though he knew Mr. Apple was not exactly enthusiastic about this turn of events, he couldn't help but be excited. He was going to camp out, just like a real explorer. Yes, I think this will do. It's perfect. <laughs> if only we could make a fire. We can. Essential equipment, remember? <laughs> Primrose? Over here, Papa. Whatever are you doing out here? I'm waiting for Grandpa and Wilfred to come back from the high hills. It's very dark now. You know, they probably came home a different way and are at this very moment sitting next to the fire at Crabapple Cottage while we're standing out here freezing our tails off. Uh, why didn't I think of that? Let's go. And I'm very glad that your essential equipment included food because all I had in my pocket were the two sandwiches the Voles gave us. It was in Sir Hogmead Whorehound's book. It told me all about essential things. Mm -mm. Well, I think you're the most essential thing round here, Wilfred. Mr. Apple? Yes, Wilfred? Will you tell me the story about how you got your limp? Oh, Wilfred. You've heard that one a thousand times. It happened when you were out exploring, didn't it? Mm. I went off on my own, even though everyone warned me not to, because of the weasel. But you saw it, and you didn't run away. That was my first mistake. No, you ran towards the weasel because you were trying to chase it away from Brambley Hedge. That was my second mistake. But I didn't realize it until I felt the weasel's teeth on my leg. But you got away! Oh! 
Mr. Apple, you must have been awfully brave. <laughs> and now, uh, uh, I'm awfully tired. <sighs> so the two mice crawled into their little cave on the rocky ledge. As they fell asleep, the only sound they could hear was the murmur of a stream that ran through the valley below like a silver ribbon in the moonlight. at this time of night. Uh, sorry to bother you so late, Flags, uh, but... Uh, Grandpa uh, and Wilfred uh, aren't uh, back from the high hills. Did they say anything to you about a change of plan? No, but it was such a beautiful day. Perhaps they did more exploring than they meant to. And ended up spending another night with the voles. See, Betty? There's nothing to worry about. And no matter what, Wilfred is in safe paws with Pep. I think we should all go to bed. If they're not back in the morning, let's meet at the Old Oak Palace and decide then if we should take any action. <laughs> Mr. Apple! Mr. Apple, look! The mist's gone! And there's a path down the mountain! Oh, oh, oh. Okay. We have to take it slowly. My leg is... Oh. Oh. It's very sore. Here, put some of this on it. What is it? Comfrey ointment. It was part of the... Essential um... equipment. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> When Wilfred and Mr. Apple didn't return, Mr. and Mrs. Toadflax, Mrs. Apple, Lord Woodmouse and Primrose decided to go and look for them. Flax and Lily went along to show them the way. I do hope they're all right. Of course they are. Pip is very experienced at this kind of thing. I know he'll be taking good care of Wilfred. Are you all right, Mr. Apple? <coughs> oh, it's funny how it's harder going down. Oh, oh, and it was going up. Here, let me help. Oh, I, I, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Wilfred, but I can't go any further. Are you sure? Oh, positive. But I can't go on and just leave oh, you here. And anyway, I don't know where here is. Oh, this is all my fault. If only we hadn't gone exploring. What are we going to do? Is this the way you went yesterday? Yes. Then we crossed the stream at the stepping stones. Meanwhile, high up in the hills... Mm. Well, the way I see it, we can't go back and we can't go forward. Mm. <sighs> oh, that pretty much sums it up, Wilfred. <sighs> Wait a minute. I'm afraid I'm going to have to wait longer than that. I've got it! We'll sail down the stream. We'll what down the what? We'll sail down the stream. Yes, we'll tie these logs together to make a raft, just like real explorers. It'll be great. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it will, Wilfred. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Come on, Grandma! Let's go! Oh, not too fast now, Primrose. Oh. <laughs> there. What do you think, Mr. Apple? <sighs> I think Sir Hogweed Horhound would have been proud. Really? Really, Wilfred. Ready? Ready.
on a rock and looked everywhere and I still didn't see them. <gasps> What's that? Just hold on a minute. There. Oh, it's a hat. Oh, <gasps> it's Wilfred's. I made it for his last birthday. Oh, no. What could have happened to them? You don't think... Wait a minute. Did you hear that? <gasps> it sounds like Wilfred. Oh, Wilfred! Look! <laughs> Primrose! It is Wilfred! Wilfred! Grandpa! Uh, but we never would have made it if Wilfred hadn't been such a good explorer. Thank you, Wilfred. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Apple. It was my fault, really, for climbing up that rock looking for gold. And I found some. Oh, did you? Oh, let me have a look. Oh, oh, where is it? Oh, Wilfred, that's not gold. It's not? No. <laughs> but it's just as valuable. Have a look, Lily. <gasps> Wilfred! You found some of Great Grandpa Blackthorn's lichen. Oh. The dye we use for our wool. It's very, very rare. And we completely run out. Wilfred, this is better than gold. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Wilfred. <laughs> well done. Oh, Wilfred, what an adventure. Next time, I'm going to... Very early on a beautiful summer morning. The sun shining down on Brambley Hedge was just beginning to feel warm and the air still tinged with dew smelled green and fresh. Primrose Woodmouse didn't want to waste one moment of such a spectacular day. She was on her way to the Hornbeam to see if she could wake her friend Wilfred Toflax. Wilfred! Wilfred! Over here Primrose! and right over left and pull. <gasps> I did it! You did what, Wilfred? I did this sailor's knot here, see? 
Very good. But why are you tying sailors' knots so early in the morning? Primrose, haven't you heard? We've run out of salt and the salter isn't supposed to come till next summer. So Dusty is going to sail all the way down the river to the sea to get some more. Dusty's sailing in his boat to get more salt? And I'm going with him. You are? Yes, yes. Then that means I can go as well. No. What do you mean, no? I mean, um, that this is a journey for intrepid sailors only. I, I can do sailors' knots and stuff. So I'm an intrepid sailor, but you, um, aren't. But I can learn. I'll go and ask Dusty myself. Oh! Oh! Ask Dusty what? Well, Fred, we're leaving soon. Are you ready to go? Aye, aye, Captain! So... What did you want to ask me, Primrose? I wanted to know if I could come with you as well. I may not be able to tie uh, knots. As long as it's all right with Lord and Lady Woodmouse, it's all right with me. But the more the merrier. But hurry, if you're coming, you must get down to the river bank as quickly as you can. I will! Primrose, wait! What for, Wilfred? For you to tell me I'm not an intrepid sailor? Well, are you? You've got to have what it takes to make such a dangerous journey. Really? And what does it take to be an intrepid sailor? Well, according to Sir Hogweed Whorehound, Bramley Hedge's greatest... Greatest explorer! I know. Hmm. Yeah. According to him, it takes three things. One, an intrepid sailor must be brave. Two, an intrepid sailor must be able to go with the flow. And three, an intrepid sailor must be able to sail. And do you know how to sail? No, but Dusty is going to teach me. Good. Then he can teach me as well. Lord and Lady Woodmouse were very pleased to let Primrose go on such an exciting and important journey as long as she did as she was told. Primrose could hardly believe she'd be sailing down the river all the way to the sea. What would it look like? How big would it be? I can be an intrepid sailor just like Wilfred. I know I can. Dusty! Poppy! Hello, Primrose. Glad you made it. Hello, Wilfred. I thought maybe you weren't going to be able to go. Welcome aboard the Periwinkle. Wilfred, why don't you show Primrose where to put her things? Aye, aye, Captain. Follow me. Oh, it's so cosy. Um, do you mind if I take the top bunk? Of course not, Wilfred. Bunny would rather have the bottom bunk anyway. I can't wait till we set sail. Neither can I. I want to learn how to steer. <laughs> Primrose, you steer this big boat. <laughs> and why not, Wilfred Toadflax? Primrose, Wilfred. Dusty wants us. Come on. Come and look at this. Does it show where we're going? Yes, it does. It's the old Salter's map. You see? Here's our hedge, and we've got to sail all the way down this river until we get to Seagull Rock. Which means we're near Sandy Bay. Which means we've reached the sea. <laughs> Ahoy there! It's Papa! Mama said they'd come down to say goodbye. Isn't this exciting? I can't remember anyone from the hedge going downstream. Can you remember ever running out of salt? No. No, I can't say that I can. Exactly. I can't think where it's all gone. Two old years' supply. Perhaps I shouldn't have salted all those walnuts. Oh, don't worry about that now, dear. All ashore that's going ashore. Oh. I've always wanted to say that. Look, they're about to leave. Will they be all right? Only Dusty's never sailed so far before, you know. Look, Betty, if the sea mice manage to get the salt all the way up to us, I'm sure Dusty can sail downstream to fetch more. Bye, everyone! Bye! Bye, Bye, Bye. everyone! Wilfred, remember to be a good mouse and do as Dusty said. Have a lovely time, Primrose. Remember those knots I showed you. Bye, Wilfred. Goodbye, son. Goodbye. 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 We're on our way. 
Wilfred waved to the mice on shore until they were out of sight. But Primrose was watching Dusty steer the boat. She wanted to learn as much about sailing as she possibly could. Here we are. Lunch, everyone. Yes, please. It's a good wind, isn't it? If it keeps blowing like this, we'll get there in no time. And so the hours flew by as the periwinkle sped through the water, the brisk wind billowing her sails. I'm going to get to steer first. Oh, no, you're not. Yes, I am. You know why? Because I'm an intrepid sailor. <laughs> so am I. I'm going to be first. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> oh. 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 Careful. Oh. What's happening? Oh, no. Oh. Why have we stopped? We've run aground. Oh, Dusty. I'm so sorry. There is nothing we can do about it now. These things happen. Not to intrepid sailors, they don't. Now we'll never get to the sea. And it's all my fault. We'll be stuck here forever. The next morning, after a fitful sleep, Primrose woke with a start when the boat lurched. What? What's wrong? The boat's moving. Oh, you're right. Come on, you two. There's no time to lie in your bunks. But what happened? I thought we were stuck. Not anymore. It rained all night, so the water level rose. And we floated clear. Oh, hooray! Once again, the wind filled the periwinkle's sails, and the little boat carried the four mice further down the river towards the sea. Are you still, um, thinking about learning to sail, then? <laughs> it wasn't all my fault, you know. You pushed me. Look! Over there! What is it? I can see boats! I think it's Seagull Rock! Well spotted, Primrose. Trim the sails, Poppy. Does that mean we're almost there? It does, Wilfred. Soon we'll see the sea. As Dusty carefully steered the periwinkle towards the jetty, Primrose and Wilfred wondered how long it would take before they reached the sea. If at first you don't succeed... Ahoy! Are we on course for Sandy Bay? Yes, but not by boat. Best anchor here and take the path up the cliffs. Throw me a rope, I'll make you fast. Primrose and Wilfred were so excited about getting off the boat that they forgot to collect their belongings. Aren't you two taking anything with you? Oh! oh uh... So, you want to get to Sandy Bay, do you? Oh, yes, please! We're looking for a mouse called Purslane Salt Apple. Then this is what you do. You see that path? Well, don't pay any attention to it, because it's not the right one. Now, you see that path? That's the one you want to follow up through the pine trees, not to the dunes. You'll be there before you know it. Well, what are we waiting for? The excited mice slowly made their way up the steep path through the pine trees. At last, they stepped up to the very brow of the hill and there, spread before them, glittering in the afternoon sun, was the sea. So big! Oh, so well, we finally made it. Where do we go now? Look! Over there! I can see some mice! Oh, yes. I think that might be Purse Lane. Purse Lane. It's Dusty Dogwood. Dusty? From Bramley Page? Why, what are you doing so far from home? We've run out of salt. Oh dear. No, I wasn't due to meet you at the salt store on the river bank till next summer. That's right. So that's why we're here now. 
I'm Poppy Dogwood. And I'm Primrose Woodmouse. And I'm Wilfred Toadflax. A pleasure to make your acquaintances. I'm Thrift Sold Apple and this is my son, Pebble. That's my sister, Shell. And that's Shrimp. Shell. Thank you, Shrimp. It's beautiful. Come in, come in. You must be hungry. This is lovely. Pebble, why don't you and Shell show Primrose and Wilfred where they can wash their paws and whiskers and where they'll be sleeping? Yes, Mum. This way. This is the bathroom. Wow! And that's the water for washing. And here is where you'll be sleeping. Did you really come all the way in the boat? Did you get the steer? No. But I would have if Primrose hadn't run us aground. Wilfred, <laughs> that's not fair. Not everyone can be an intrepid sailor. <laughs> <gasps> you see, what really happened was... Sorry to interrupt, but it's lunchtime. Lunch! I think she really likes you. Mm -hmm. I'm coming, Shrimp. Mmm, -hmm. seaweed. My favourite. Seaweed? And mummy. Oh, this marsh samphire is yummy. Marsh samphire? Mm. 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 An intrepid sailor goes with the flow, which, mm. which means eating what's there. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. But Primrose <gasps> couldn't even bring herself to taste the strange food that was in front of her. She was beginning to think that maybe she wasn't such an intrepid sailor after all. Do you think we might go to the beach this afternoon? The beach? Oh yes, please, please! Let me check the weather. wet, which means there's rain coming, possibly even a storm, oh. and it's a beautiful day at the moment. Oh, please, please, please can, can we go? go? Please, 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 please. They have come a long way to see the sea. Oh, why not? And I've <laughs> even got some things I brought from Brambley Hedge we can take as a picnic. Primrose, Wilfred, Dusty and Poppy spent the afternoon by the big blue sea with the salt apples. The beach was so unlike anything the Brambley Hedge mice had ever seen. Primrose tried hard not to think about boats running aground, or marsh samphire, or intrepid sailors. Oh! Oh! oh there. There. Do you think this could be the storm you mentioned? No, no. It's just a little breeze. Trust me. <gasps> now, that was a big breeze. You know, First Lane, I don't like the look of those clouds gathering. <laughs> Come on, everyone. We must get home before the storm breaks. We've got to cover the salt pan.
Here we are. But where's Shrimp? And uh, what about Primrose? I thought they were with you. No, that means they're still up in the storm. Well, go back up to find them. I'll come with you. So will I. No, no, no. I'll go alone. We can't have any more mice than necessary out in this storm. It's too dangerous. anymore. I've got to find out what's going on up there. So have I. You're right. I can't stay down here worrying another minute. Is that better? Oh, yes. Thank you so much, Primrose. Are we going to the storm bunker now? Shh. One salt apple, two salt apples, three salt apples. Three salt apples between the lightning and the thunder. The storm is definitely moving away. The worst is over. Shrimp! Primrose! Where were you? I went to find Shrimp. You did? If it weren't for this brave young mouse, Shrimp would probably have been blown away by the storm. And I'd still be hopping around with sand in my eyes. Oh, thank you, Primrose. Anyone else would have done the same thing. I don't know. I would have been much too scared. <gasps> Me too. You were really brave, Primrose. Really brave. Just like an intrepid sailor. Thank you, Wilfred. And I even steered our boat without running aground. Didn't I, Shrimp? Boat! <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of boats, now that the storm is over, I think we'd best be heading back to Brambley Hedge. I want to make a good start before dark. Dusty and Purslane loaded as many barrels of salt as the salt apple's handcart could carry. Oh. Well, I think that's just about it. Not quite. Here's some seaweed. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I know how much you liked it, and that's not something you'll be able to get at the hedge. And. We've a present for you. This is a special shell. When you hold the shell to your ear, you'll hear the sea. And then you think of us, and then you'll come back and see us again. Oh, thank, thank you. you! And so, laden down with salt, luggage and gifts, 
the little party set off along the dune and made their way down the cliff path to the periwinkle. Mind you keep all that salt dry, but be sure to use it up quickly so you'll have to come back again soon. You could all come and visit us. We'd love to show you Bramley Hedge. And I'd love to see it. So would someone else I know. Hello? No stowaways. Cheeky dumb thing. Go on, off you go. <laughs> You'd like to stay with Primrose, wouldn't you? Thanks. It's all right, Shrimp. I'll come and visit you again sometime. I hope you will. Me too. All aboard! Primrose, Wilfred, Dusty and Poppy hug the salt apples goodbye and thank them for all their help. Though they looked forward to getting back to their families at Brambley Hedge, they were all sad to leave their new friends. Primrose felt a little less sad when Dusty asked her if she wanted to steer. Oh! And then, to make herself feel even better, she started to sing. I'm a sailor on the salty sea a sailing on the phone But the sailor's life is sweetest When the sailor's set for home Two, three, four! I'm a sailor on the salty sea A sailing on the phone But the sailor's life is sweetest When the sailor's set for home Two, three, four! I'm a It was the beginning of summer. The trees were in leaf and sunshine sparkled on the stream. The mill wheel turned in the cool shadows of the riverbank. Inside the mill, Dusty Dogwood was busy grinding the corn for the mice at Bramley Hedge. In the kitchen, his wife Poppy was even busier. Doing my best. Oh, Poppy, we've got visitors. Visitors? Now. <sighs> Did you know that there are 92 stairs up to your kitchen? Oh, was it really that many primrose? 
However do you manage. Mm. I have to say, Lady Daisy, it's difficult going up and down with all three babies. I find I get so tired. That's Rose. I have Buttercup. Oh, so this must be Pipkin. There. I can't wait until their naming day. Yes, it's only two days away. So much to do. Try not to worry, Poppy. We're all here to help you. I can come back later to help bath the babies if you like. Oh, thank you, Primrose. That would be lovely. After Primrose and her mother left, Dusty got on with the business of the day. Quiet, Dusty. You wake the babies. As he walked the familiar route to the store stump, Dusty thought about Poppy and couldn't help worrying a little. Wow! That's clever, Mr. Apple. Why, thank you, Wilfred. Poppy's babies will love it. Hold along. Pom, pom. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Dusty. Hello, Mr. Apple. Hello, Wilfred. How are those babies of yours? <laughs> Noisy, but they're great fun. Oh, Poppy is not so happy, though. <laughs> I expect she's tired. <laughs> Three babies is a real pawful. Yes, and living in the mill doesn't help. It's noisy, dusty, and damp. And there are 92 stairs up to the kitchen. Are there really? How did you know? I counted them. Well, I'd best be getting back to see if there's anything I can do to help. I wish we could help Poppy. I'm going to make her something to cheer her up. Could I have some wood, please, Mr Apple? Of course, Wilfred. Oh, dear. I've used it all. But I know where we can find some more. Come with me. What is this place? It's called May Blossom Cottage. I've never even noticed it before. And we must have passed it lots of times. Oh, it's been empty for years. I've been using it to keep my wood dry. Now then, how much wood do you need, Wilfred? Um, does this cooker still work? Uh, I expect so. Used to be very cosy when my aunt lived here. Your aunt lived here, Grandpa. How big is it? Well, my aunt's bedroom was above this room. And then I think there's another nice-sized room above that. And if I remember correctly, it goes up into the tree for several stories. I hadn't really thought about it before, but there's quite a lot of space. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if we could clean it up for Poppy and Dusty and the babies? You know something, Primrose? That's a wonderful idea. Yes! I wish I'd thought of it. We could clean it up and paint it. Yes, and give it to Poppy as a surprise on naming day. N naming day? But that's the day after tomorrow. Oh, there's so much work to be done. Yes, but we can do it. We'll get everyone to help. Well, I suppose we could. Mr. Apple, is that you in there? Dusty, come on in. Ah, oh, I thought I heard your voices. Poppy sent me out to see if you got any rusks at the store stump. The babies are teething and... No problem, Dusty. But first, we have something to ask you. What if we cleaned up this cottage and painted it? Would you and Poppy and the babies like to live here? Are you serious? Completely. Why? Why, that would be wonderful. It would make all the difference. I must go and tell Poppy. No! No! We mustn't tell Poppy. We mustn't. We think it should be a surprise. Yes. Of course, that's even better. But you know, keeping such a big secret from her isn't going to be easy. You just leave it to us. The next day, Primrose and Lady Daisy took Poppy and the babies to a shady place along the hedge. Primrose told Poppy they'd chosen it because it was nice and quiet, the perfect spot to do the sewing. 
but they'd really chosen it because it was far away from Operation May Blossom Cottage. The hedge was bursting with activity. Mr. Apple was in charge of repairs and Mrs. Apple was in charge of cleaning. Mrs. Crusty Bread was in charge of making a special cake for the surprise party. Now then, now then, now then. Ooh, I'll need three candles, won't I? A blue one for Pipkin, a pink one for Rose, and a yellow one for Buttercup. Perfect! <laughs> and Mr. and Mrs. Toadflax and Basil were in charge of delivering the whitewash. Oh, good. Here's the whitewash. Now, why don't you take it on upstairs? That's a very good idea. I'll wait down here. Here's the whitewash. Oh, nice and thick. Just the way you wanted it, Pip. Thank you. As soon as we've painted the walls, we can start to fetch the furniture from, from the, the mill. mill. Oh, uh, how can we do that without Poppy knowing? Don't worry. Primrose and I have thought of a plan. And I believe she and Lady Daisy are carrying it out as we speak. Uh, it must be really hard looking after three babies. Yes. But I'm loving every minute of it. And I've had an idea which I think will help. I just wish there wasn't so much to do in so little time. We're only halfway through their naming day gowns. And I've still got to finish their quilts. But Poppy, that's what my idea is about. Yes. Why don't you and the babies come and stay at the Old Oak Palace tonight? Then we can help you with the sewing. And tomorrow, I can help you dress the babies for naming day. Oh, that's such a kind offer. So, will you come? Are you certain we won't be too much trouble? No, we would love you to come. In fact, I'm counting on it. Well then, yes please. What do you say, Buttercup? <laughs> Now, why don't you and Primrose go to the mill to collect whatever you need while I look after the babies? Come on, Poppy. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm so glad you're going to stay because I really, really, really wanted to help dress the babies for... Oh! oh, oh. Hi, Primrose. Uh, hello, Poppy. Hello, Wilfred. You look as if you've been painting. And isn't that Dusty's hammer? Um, uh, yes. You've been making the babies a present, haven't you, Wilfred? I have. Oh, yes, I have. And I borrowed this hammer from Dusty. I'll return it soon, I promise. Oh, I won't worry about that, Wilfred. I shouldn't think he needs it at the moment. No. Um, well, uh, bye. I can't imagine what he'd be making that would take so much paint. You never know with Wilfred. He's very creative, you see. Hello there. Oh, hello, Basil. Oh, I see you've been painting as well. Um, yes? Have you been decorating, Basil? Decorating? Oh, yes, decorating. One of my favourite things, decorating. Bye. Bye, Basil. I wish I had the time to decorate the mill. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that now. Look, here we are. Let's hope we don't run into anyone else covered in paint. Dusty. Hello, Primrose. He's covered in paint as well. Um. And why are you measuring that old table? I, I just wondered how big it is. It's no use, Dusty. I'm afraid you'll have to tell her. Tell her? Yes. You'll have to tell her about the table. The table? Um, uh, oh. Uh, the thing is, oh, well. it's meant to be a surprise. Oh, then don't say any more. I love surprises. Good. Well, I'd better go now. See you later. Now, what do you need for tonight? Well, I'll need these blankets. Oh, and all three baskets and extra clothes, and nappies, and... Oh, oh, Primrose, I'm sorry. 
It was so very kind of you and your mother to invite us for the night, but I honestly don't think I can face all that packing. I'll help! No, but there's so much tidying up to do. But Poppy! No, I really must stay here tonight after all. But thank you so much for offering. I really appreciate it. Where are you going? To fetch the babies. I have a feeling your mother may have had enough of them by now. Mama? Um, why don't you stay here and rest and I'll ask Mama to bring them back. Are, are you sure? Yes, and then you can get on with your sewing. <sighs> yes. And when we get back, mm. I'll help with everything. Thank you, Primrose. I've taken the babies back to the palace. Oh, good. That gives me time to tell everyone what's happening. Listen, everyone! Poppy won't go to the old oak palace! What? what? Oh, I was afraid that might happen. Now how are we going to move the furniture? Dusty. Why don't you go to the mill and try to make her change her mind? How? Oh, I'm sure you'll think of something, dear. I'll come with you. And so will I. Oh, thanks. I have a feeling I'll need all the help I can get. Poppy? Pop? Oh, yeah. oh look. Should we wake her? No, we'll fit. We can't. <laughs> It's the first sleep she's had in days. If Poppy's here, how are we going to move the furniture? Oh, dear. We can't. Oh, no. May Blossom Cottage was sparkling clean and beautifully painted. The mice were very pleased with their work. All that was needed now was Dusty and Poppy's furniture. But as long as Poppy was asleep in the flour mill, there was little chance the mice could move anything without her knowing. So Wilfred, Primrose and Dusty came up with the only possible solution. It's all right, my love, it's all right. You're at the old oak palace. It just seemed easier to bring you here than to move the babies. Oh, but I was going to... Oh, I need to... You're just in time for tea. <laughs> no, who wants more mashed neck? Oh, I wonder if that means yes. Just look at them. Have you been good little mice? They couldn't have been better, little treasures. <laughs> and now that you're settled here, I'm going to tidy up at the mill and make sure everything's organised for tomorrow. Oh, will you? Of course. Now, you get on with what you have to do, but don't wait up for me. You'll need all the rest you can get for tomorrow. Bye bye, Rose. And Buttercup. And the Pipkin. Say bye bye, Dada. <coughs> oh! I can't believe it, but that worked. So, what do we do now? I'll stay here to help Poppy. Wilfred, you can go with Dusty. Are we going to move the furniture now? No, not quite yet. 
I think it would be best to wait until after dark. See you later, Primrose. And thanks. From now on, it should be easy. Later that evening, after dark, the great furniture moving operation began. At the old oak palace, as Primrose helped finish the sewing, she wondered how Wilfred and the other mice were getting on. I finished this quilt. Well done, Primrose. Thank you very much. Oh, it's so lovely and peaceful here. No mill wheel grinding, no flower sacks dumping, no... What was that? Nothing. Just Papa tidying up outside. Oh, I'm tired. Oh. 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 I think we had best be getting to bed. We've got a big day tomorrow, and the babies will be waking you up before first light. How well I know it. And thank you both again. Oh, I can't believe we finished the sewing with time to spare. Many paws make light work. And it's amazing what you can do when the babies are asleep. Very early the next morning, all the mice gathered beneath the hawthorns for the naming ceremony. Primrose was particularly pleased because Poppy and Dusty asked her to hold Rose. She stood proudly in between her friends as the old vole recited the naming day poem. Buds on the branches blossom and flower, the blackbirds sing in the leafy bower, and over the hill comes the rising sun to shine on the field and on you. Little one. Oh, that was lovely. We name you Rose. We name you Buttercup. And we name you Pippi. <laughs> it doesn't seem that long ago that we were here naming your Daisy. Mama, the cottage is all ready. But how are we going to get Poppy into it? Well, now, Primrose. Oh, oh dear, it's raining. Whoa! Poppy, quick! You don't want the babies to get wet in their lovely new gowns. Oh dear! She's going the wrong way. Poppy! Poppy! Over here, dear! Come and shelter in this cottage doorway. There's not enough room out here. Why don't you go in? When Poppy entered the cottage, she looked around. Garlands of flowers hung from newly washed beams, and bright china that looked rather familiar was arranged on the dresser's shelves. Oh, it's so cosy. But wait, isn't that our old table? The one Dusty was measuring. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look around. Leaving Primrose in charge of the babies, Poppy and Dusty climbed the stairs. There are only 20 stairs to the nursery here. Dusty led the bewildered Poppy to a small room that was warm <gasps> and bright. Fresh curtains hung at the windows, and beneath them stood three little cots, each with its own embroidered quilt. But Dusty, how could... is this...? Yes. This is our house, with love from all our friends in Brambley Hedge. Oh, Dusty! Oh, I can't believe it! Oh, surprise! surprise! <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you all so much. We hope you'll be happy here, my dear. Oh, Grandmother, we shall. We shall. Who wants some of my special naming day punch? It's very good, if I do say so myself. I'm certainly happy to offer another opinion. You can't have a naming day without Basil's punch. See? We told you there was a surprise. And I do love surprises. Thanks to Mrs. Crusty Bread, there was plenty to eat and drink. Cowslip and violet salads, rose petal sandwiches, primrose pottage and meadow sweet tea, but the highlight of the surprise party was, of course, Mrs. Crusty Bread's cake. 
Now then, everybody, it's time to cut the cake. <laughs> While the babies played on the floor, the mice of Brambley Hedge celebrated their naming day. Aren't you a little charmer? Actually, Basil, this is Buttercup. Equally charming. Before long, the food had all been eaten. The punch had all been drunk. And as for the stars of the show... Primrose, Wilfred, could you help me? Of course. I'll take Pipkin. 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, hey. Primrose, you were right. Twenty stairs. Of course I was right. <laughs> I can't count, Wilfred. <laughs> when these babies grow up, I hope they'll be as wonderful as you two. Well, I don't know if that's possible. Wilfred? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd better go back downstairs. The babies are asleep in their lovely new nursery. Then let me propose a toast to the babies. To Rose, Buttercup and Pipkin. And their new home. Oh, and as everyone drank to Poppy and Dusty's babies, they slept soundly in their new room, <laughs> snuggled under their new quilts, dreaming their first dreams in their new house. <laughs>